Well, good morning, church. It is great to see you all here as we worship the Lord together this day. It is a great day to worship the Lord, and so it's good for us to gather together. Um, a couple of things that are going on in the life of the church. One is that if you're online and you're visiting with us, I invite you to mark like or subscribe and connect with us. If you have any comments, leave those in the lines below. Of course, if you're here in person, it's good to see you in reality. It's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, if there's any way that we as a church can be a ministry with you, please uh, let me know so that we can respond as, as would be appropriate. A couple of things that are going on in the life of the church, you've probably already seen as you came in that uh, we're collecting some uh, yard sale items out front and so if you have some items you'd like to uh, donate for this upcoming yard sale uh, please see john page uh, and his phone number will be on the screen it's also in the bulletin um, or if you'd like to help i know that they're always looking for some extra hands to help out with the yard sale and it'd be great to have your participation in that as well uh, also, just to note that um, I'm going to be taking off for about three weeks uh, after this Sunday, and so if, uh, if you need me, you can call my cell, but I won't answer. Um, but just note that uh, Ruthie Page will be glad to uh, respond to some of those concerns, and uh, we have arranged for pastoral oversight while I'm gone. And so uh, if you have any of those needs, uh, please free, uh, feel free to connect with that. Another thing to note is that uh, we are continuing uh, as we are trying to be in this sort of normal phase, hopefully for a while, uh, but uh, ushers, greeters, uh, helpers with uh, refreshments and with our media team, uh, we're helping to uh, train folks for those different pieces of ministry. And if you are interested in being a part of that, um, also see Ruthie, I know she's got the sign-up sheet for the ushers and greeters and the refreshment sign-ups are downstairs. And so lots of opportunities to get connected and to be a part of what is happening in the church. Um, one other thing to note, uh, I know that in the news we've been hearing about all kinds of uh, variants of the COVID virus and ways that that is going to be impacting communities and states. Uh, as a church, we have a phased program depending on the amount of community uh, spread and active cases. And so we have a green zone that we're currently in, uh, able to go and enjoy worship together without masks, no social distancing, enjoying that. But just note that uh, if we have a certain number of cases, the number for Haverhill is five, uh, that we will encourage people to wear masks and do social distancing. And when we get over 15 cases, we will encourage people to stay home <laughs> because we'll recognize the case load would be too high in our community. And so we try to respond as that comes up. Uh, my hope is that we'll at least enjoy the rest of the summer without having to do that. But uh, we, we leave that in God's hands as we look to God to answer our prayers for that in this season. Uh, with all of that in mind, uh, does anyone else have any other announcements we need to uh, make sure we share? One thing I will mention is today is a very special worship service. Uh, we will be able to celebrate the renewal of vows of three special couples in this uh, community of faith, and uh, we'll have a chance to participate with them later on. So uh, our service will be a little different than normal, uh, but it will be a great experience, and I'm glad that you're here with us today. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to invite us to stand as we sing To God Be the Glory, hymn number 98. <laughs>
together. Along life's pathways, we search continually for signs to point us in positive directions. Christ has given us signs of God's love, which point us in the way of life. By God's grace, we receive the gift of this heavenly food. No more shall we hunger and thirst after the things which cannot sustain us. Now we can be fed and nourished by Christ. Open our hearts in gratitude, Lord, for all the wondrous things you have done for us. Open our spirits to hear your words of hope for us today. Amen. Thank you, Clarice. As we uh, gather together, I invite you to take a moment to pass the peace of Christ to one another. For those who are online, just mark your hello and say greetings to everyone. So take a moment to greet one another, elbow bump, fist bump, whatever you want to do. Do you want to play? I'm going to invite us to uh, sing together. Our summer choir today okay. is you. You're all uh, recruited now to be a part of our summer choir today. Yay. And um, so we're going to be singing Sanctuary. Uh, the words, I believe, are in your bulletin. Uh, if not, it is in the faith we sing. Um, I'm looking at now. Yes, the words are right there in your bulletin, right in the middle. Uh, so I invite you to stand as we sing that together.
The scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to the hardship, to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child and thought like a child and reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away the ways of childhood, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, I see on, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now we know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Well, it's great to see you all here this morning, and as we are preparing to uh, celebrate the renewal of vows for three couples here in the church, um, I just got to tell you, it is exciting for me uh, as I think about the witness that each of these couples present to us as a church. Uh, marriages nowadays, as you know, in the United States, don't generally last that long. Uh, but uh, it was great to hear as hearing anniversaries, 50 anniversary, 60 anniversary for these couples. The longevity and the witness of their lives together helps us to recognize that there is such a thing as commitment. <laughs> there is such a thing as love that can last the ages together. Uh, too often when we think about love, people think about something like a sinkhole. Uh, it's some sort of place that you fall into. <laughs> and if it's a really deep sinkhole, you might fall out of it as well. Uh, I don't think love can be compared to a sinkhole. <laughs> At least most marriages shouldn't be compared to a sinkhole. But the idea is that uh, love is much deeper than just some sort of temporary experience. And I think as we hear the witness of each of these couples to recognize that, you know, that, that first phase of love when maybe you meet in school or you see that person across the way, oh, you know, the, the lights come on, the, the flowers show, the, you know, somehow the rainbows blow or whatever it is, and suddenly they, you're smitten by that individual. To know that that is a great piece of love but that doesn't last you 50 years. <laughs> that might last you three, maybe, if you get there. Uh, I remember talking with a, a couple that said, by the time we got to the honeymoon, that was over. <laughs> but the real question is, what is love all about? What is it that allows for love to grow and be sustained through time? And that's where the scripture really helps us to know what love is all about. Love, of course, is not some mystical dreamland sinkhole, but rather it is something that is known and can be known through its actions. The truth is you don't really know what love is until you have somebody to love. You don't know what kindness is until you have another person to show kindness to. You don't know what mercy is until you've asked forgiveness from another individual. And so love can only be known in and through its actions and through its interaction with another person. It is in that experience that we come to know what love is. And Griffin, we're going to keep it on one of those cameras. <laughs> just, you know, one of the backgrounds, we've had lots of issues with our cameras this morning. So we're just going to keep it here for a while. 
So that as we are thinking about love and hearing about that, the scripture we just heard this morning about 1 Corinthians 13 helps us to know the depth of what that is. Like, how do we really know what it means to be patient with another individual, except for when, not just when you're waiting for that individual who spends a little more time in the bathroom than you think they should, uh, and you have to be patient for them. Yeah, that's one kind of patience. But the deeper form of patience is recognizing that that person who stands before you when you get married changes over time. And you get to be patient as their character and who they are grows and changes Sometimes with a, a side step backwards or a couple steps forward, and you get to learn who they are in a brand new way. I think of it with young couples. I say, by the way, every year that person is different. You're marrying each of that version of that person moving forward in time. That's a lot of people <laughs> that you're marrying at that one moment. But patience is only known as it, it causes you to let go of some of your own agenda, let go of some of your priorities, your expectations, and begin to embrace the other person, the other, in a new and profound way. Patience begins to change and mold us and shape us. And that is really the gift of the Holy Spirit that is given to us through love, is that God himself, through love, molds and shapes us as God is patient with our lives, as we don't always fit into God's timeline or what we think God's timeline should be, but God is patient with us in each of our various steps in life, our missteps, our miscues, or whatever it is, and God knows that we are growing and changing each year, each way, and that God embraces each version of us as we grow and change over time. It says in the scripture that love seeks out the other person's understanding, not waiting for the other person to come around to your way of thinking, but instead to seek out that other person so that you might understand them. What a beautiful understanding. Love doesn't just sit on the couch and say, well, they're a mess, <laughs> waiting for them to come around to understanding why it is you're so mad at them. But rather, love seeks out and says, there's something wrong. Something isn't right between us. Help me understand. Where did we... Where do we misunderstand each other? How do I know what you're thinking? What's going on? And patiently listening for that. I think of that same sort of mentality, that same sort of energy of love when Jesus Christ came in the form of that baby Jesus in Bethlehem, that God was not satisfied in waiting in the heavenly realms for humanity to figure out our mess ups, but rather God jumped into human history and walks alongside of us in our journey to say how much he loves us so that we might understand and know God's mind. Indeed, Christ comes to help us understand who God is and joins us each step of the way so we would understand the mind of God and that there would be deeper fulfillment of that relationship together. Indeed, one of the, the beautiful things of Scripture is to recognize we have a Savior who is not unfamiliar with our sufferings and pain. Jesus, who is tempted in every way, the same way that we are as humanity, understands what it looks like when we are tempted in our own struggles, when we face trials of many kinds and many uh, different ways, that we can come to the Lord and, and share with him our hearts because God knows and understands that because Jesus has walked the streets with us and knows that very journey as we do so. It describes how love seeks out forgiveness and recognizing that in marriage, every once in a while, there might be an argument or two. Is that right? Sometimes? Never, right? Never have an argument. <laughs> the truth is, if you have a marriage where there's never an argument, there's never been any growth. Do you realize that? That, that God somehow, in the, the mystery of time and space, has always put together people who need to grow on one another. And, and, and I kind of think of that as part of God's great humor, and that he doesn't put two people together who are exactly the same. And part of that humor is the reality that if you were with somebody exactly like you, you would never grow. There would be no challenge. There would be no space for you to become more than you were. This is some of that, that mystery. God himself, or God's self, is represented as a trinity. And the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God the Father are different. And there, there's this unity as well as the diversity as there is continued relationship with one another. It's a mystery that we still continue to try to make sense of. But in marriage, we see that represented where husbands and wives don't come from the same background, same points of view. And sometimes those arguments span a few minutes, <laughs> sometimes a little bit longer. 
But the, the whole point is at the end of it, there's a recognition that we have to let go of something that we're holding over on another. I, I knew of a couple that had sort of a running list of all the things that the other person owes them. Yes, I was seeing them because they were looking for a divorce. <laughs> Because keeping a list of wrongs and do's and don'ts is not what this is all about. It is seeking out the other person for forgiveness. Recognizing that we, we all have errors in our own life and we have to be humble as we have faced another person to recognize that we're not perfect. And if you think you are perfect, you don't need to be married. Right? Because the reality is that marriage helps you to see your imperfections in the same way that when you look in a mirror, you start to see who, you're, who you are. Sometimes more brightly, early in the morning, I mean, not so brightly, but some, some of the change that needs to happen happens as you are in a reflective relationship with another person, helps you to know more deeply and more clearly who you really are, not who you think you are. You know, it's like, uh, you know, you put on that cape and you run down the hallway and you think you're Superman, right, until you get to the end of the window and you're not going to jump those six flights of stairs, right? It's just not going to happen. But when we look in that mirror, we recognize our need for change and forgiveness. Love seeks to forgive and be forgiven so that there might be a reconciliation with one another. And as we think about forgiveness, we recognize that in marriage, as in every relationship and every love, there is going to be sacrifice. Sacrifice is letting go of something that is important to you, something that is dear to you. People don't stay married over a long period of time without having at some point something that they had to let go of that was important to them. It could be it was ideas of themselves. Yeah, I'm always going to be this slim supermodel at 20 years old. Or maybe it was a job opportunity. Or maybe it was the other boyfriends and girlfriends that you couldn't continue to date. There's, there's things that happen as you grow older in relationship that you have to let go of. And then ultimately, as you give of that sacrifice, to do so as a sign of your love. I give up of this because of my love for you. And we hear of that sacrifice that is given to us through Christ, that Christ himself was given to us. And how do we know how great the love of God is? It was the greatness of his sacrifice, that he gave his very life, his own life for us, that we might be reconciled to God, not holding anything back, but saying, this is how much I love you, that I give you my health, myself, so that you might know of God's love. It is in that greatness of sacrifice that we know the greatness of God's love. And so we have a chance to understand what that looks like in marriages together. And I'd be interested to hear as each couple might share what it is that they had to give up over those years. But not begrudgingly, not holding it back, not saying, well, I had to do that for you, but saying how wonderful it was that I had to give this up so that we could spend time together, so that we could continue to be a couple in marriage, there is also this wonderful dance that happens. Now, some couples enjoy dancing together. Some couples have two left feet, and maybe it's just one partner or the other, and they just don't dance well together. But every couple goes through a kind of dance. And, and the dance is described this way. It's the dance of coming together, of enjoying each other's presence and wanting to spend every single moment together, you know, sharing in that meal, sort of like that uh, the movie The Lady and the Tramp when they're, you're eating that long strain of spaghetti together and oh, I can't be more together I just want to be with you all the time and then you realize over a short period of time all right I need some time alone <laughs> I need some time away I need to figure out who I am apart from you and so there's this dance of moving away getting some space between the couple and then finally going oh wait I've missed this person and coming back and that that dance is the dance of unity of coming together and that dance of diversity of knowing who you are a beautiful thing that happens in marriage is when the couple starts to understand who they are as a couple, and that begins to grow, and it's almost like its own identity, who you are as a couple. But also a beautiful thing happens where separately, you are different. And you grow and change separately, and you are supported as you go through life's journeys to become more who God has called you to be, even as an individual, even as you work together. And this happens in every relationship. And sometimes when couples come together, we're not sure what happened to that, you know, that love that happened when we were first together. And I said, when was the last time you did something just for yourself? Oh, we can't do that. That's not right. No, no. 
Maybe you just figure out how to do the motorcycle maintenance that you've been hoping to do and you, you learn that for yourself because as you grow independently, you become better for the couple. Maybe you need to know something that you've been looking for. Maybe is it just some time to be alone with God? Part of how you grow in that dance together and in unity. And that causes, of course, this great thing that happens in life, which is change. We continue to change over time, and that change that happens in a relationship doesn't come from other people forcing you to change, or even when the other person in your marriage tells you you need to change, because that is very temporary at best. The change that happens in love happens from within, to recognize that maybe I should pick up my socks because it destroys my relationships to leave them all over the living room. It comes from the internal dynamics that says I need to, you know, not just have my makeup all over the kitchen uh, or the, uh, the bathroom sink. I need to pick up after myself. Or maybe there's other ways I need to change. But it doesn't come from the outside pressure, but come from the inside out. Knowing that who I need to be with this other person requires something of me that helps me to grow to become more of who I am called to be. Ultimately, marriage itself is a beautiful testimony of what God is doing in our lives. God invites us to know of another person, not just in marriage, but in other relationships of friendships and connection with the church, because it is love that God has given to the world as a great witness of God's love for us. And as we think about marriage and we think about weddings, the, the scripture is full of imagery of how Christ calls the church his bride and we think about the church, these are the, the people who are called, who respond in their heart to God and say, yes, Lord, I want you in my life, that that is the people of God. And God calls those people who respond to that invitation, his bride. And the image and the symbolism of marriage between husband and wife is the symbol and recognition of Christ's love for his people. And that there is a longing for that day in which we will meet Christ in the clouds. And that there will be a union together. There will be a joining together of God and God's people. The, God, the people whom God has created in his image. That they would be molded to be shaped to be his beautiful bride. That we would join Christ as his people to be shaped and changed as God would hold us in his lives. This change, this ultimate understanding of what God is doing is called a covenant a covenant is very different than a commitment. A commitment is something you make between people without the recognition that God's grace is a part of it. But when you come together in the church and we exchange vows, we do so in the eyes of God, recognizing that in our own strength, in our own abilities, we can just beat the heck out of each other. But marriage requires grace. Marriage requires that there's something bigger than the two of us, something that is going to hold us together. And sometimes that the community can help in that way, but in a much bigger way is the idea of God. A God who calls us to be part of God's purpose and God's will for our lives, for his purpose for the world. And that union together is recognizing that it is in God's grace alone that we can take each step together. And so this is that mystery, that great love that God has for us. And today, as we, we witness and celebrate the renewal of vows today, I'm going to invite each of us to renew in our own hearts the, the relationships that we have with one another, that whether it be in a marriage relationship or friendships or work relationships, that we would commit today to allow for the love of God to shape our lives, that we would walk in God's love, and that we would allow for that to be manifest in that fruit of the Holy Spirit, where love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control would be the fruit of these relationships that we would see God's grace in and through each step of these journeys. Let us pray. Lord God, as we hear of your call in our lives for love, in our hearts and in our minds, perhaps you've reminded us of persons that we love, persons that we have loved well, and persons in whom we have let them down and not loved as we could or should. But Lord, we look to you recognizing that it is not in our own strength that we're able to love as you call us to. 
but that through your grace that you would enable us to love even beyond our own capacity, that you would open our eyes to see more of that opportunity, that we would pour in your love into each of these relationships. And so, God, as we all hear of these words and and are listening to the work of your Holy Spirit, that even in this next week, that you would give us divine opportunities, moments in which we might respond with your words in loving grace. And this we would pray in Jesus' name. As we continue with our service today, we are going to be uh, singing one verse of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. And in between each of those verses, each of the couple is going to come forward, and we're going to have an opportunity to help them to renew their vows together. So I invite you first to stand as we sing uh, the first verse of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. invite the Marcy's to come forward this time and you'll see on the screen we've got pictures from their initial wedding and you can actually stand right here in front this will be great I'll turn the hopefully we'll get the camera on you and I'll turn this microphone when it's your turn so I invite you to face one another hold each other's hands as you share in these vows together and friends as we're gathered together in the sight of God for the reaffirmation of the marriage covenant which God has established who created us for one another With God's presence in Jesus Christ, he graced the wedding of Cana, and in his sacrificial love, he gave us the example of love of husband and of wife. And so now I'm going to ask each of you, as you might repeat after me in these vows. And so first for Paul, in the name of God, God, and with a thankful heart, and with a thankful heart, I once again, I once again, that I, Paul, that I, Paul, take you, Becky, take you, Becky, to be my wife, to be my wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, for sickness and in health, for sickness and in health, in love and to cherish, in love and to cherish, until we are parted by death, until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. And now, Becky, I invite you to repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. And with a thankful heart. And with a thankful heart. I once again declare. I once again declare. That I, Becky. That I, Becky. Take you, Paul. Take you, Paul. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. As a congregation, we get to respond together. I invite you to uh, read the words on the screen as we uh, ask for God's blessing on this renewed couple. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all grace, bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit. Becky and Paul, who have reaffirmed their marriage covenant, enable them to grow in love and peace with you and with each other all their days, that they may reach out in concern and service to the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now each couple is going to have an opportunity to share uh, of a word with uh, their spouse and with the congregation. Um, Just speak to one another. This will pick you up, so I'll be fine. Just look at Paul, you don't have to look at the microphone. I am very thankful for our marriage and for these 55 years together. And as I think back of how the Lord brought us together, how many years ago 
uh, when my friend and I went to Chicago to uh, work, and uh, we stayed in this apartment with this elderly man, and it was your grandfather. But uh, we both had other things to do after that. We went to school, and we worked, we helped our parents, and then uh, eight years later, we both were in the same church, and so we dated and felt God leading us to marry and to go to the mission field. So we uh, joined Mission Aviation Fellowship, since you had studied that. Went to Honduras, where you grew up, and uh, had our, we had our son Tim when we went down there, and then we had our son David, and then we found out David had special needs, so we had to come back, so we knew it meant sacrifice, but love requires sacrifice too. So we came back to the States, and we lived in Wheaton, and uh, you worked there at the college, and I had a tutoring business and helped many children. And then when we found out that uh, David had cancer and he went to heaven, we felt the Lord leading us out here. And so uh, we have found that in many ways God has led and guided us uh, over the time and increased our love. We've had to work out our differences and we've had counseling and enjoyed what we learned from psychologists too and we put our faith in God and the scriptures. And uh, one of the things I've remembered is uh, when I was teaching school, I had a student who said to me, Miss Bowman, I wonder why you're not married. I guess you haven't found anybody good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I get upset, I think of that student and uh, laugh a little bit at his, his funny remark, but I'm reminded of God's grace and love uh, to us and for each other. We recently found a poem that I would like to read. It's from uh, Carlton Cards. <clears throat> Only God can take two people he's intended for each other and guide them through the years till they discover one another. Only God can take two people with their preferences and goals, then blend their gifts and talents and unite their hearts and souls. Only God can get, take two people with joy they're dreaming of, they're dreaming of, and make them one in marriage through the miracle of love. I believe that God has done this in our lives. And I thank you, Becky, for your patience and your commitment to make this true. And I'm resolving, renewing my resolve to make this a true one in our lives now. Thank you. Hey, invite us to stand as we sing the second verse of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. you to repeat after me in the name of God in the name of God and with a thankful heart and with a thankful heart I once again declare I once again declare that I Lloyd I uh, that I Lloyd take you Chrissy takes you Chrissy to be my wife to be my wife to have and to hold to have and to hold from this day forward for from this day forward for better or for worse for better or worse for richer or poorer for which are or poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, in love and to cherish, and in love and to cherish, until we are parted by death, until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Amen. 
And now, Chrissy, I invite you to repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. And with a thankful heart. And with a thankful heart. I once again declare. I once again declare. That I, Chrissy. That I, Chrissy. Take you, Lloyd. Take you, Lloyd. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or worse. For richer or poor. For richer or poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Amen. And as a congregation, I invite us to respond. Uh, Griffin, if you would put that slide up for us, we'll respond together. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all grace, bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit, Christy and Lloyd, who have reaffirmed their marriage covenant. Enable them to grow in love and peace with you and with each other all their days, that they may reach out in concern and service to the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the couple will have a chance to share the story together. I'm going to be the designated speaker for the two of us today. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say that, Lloyd, it was love at first sight, but it wasn't. <laughs> the first time I met you, you had just gotten off your motorcycle, and you took off your helmet, and you had helmet head hair. <laughs> and you were wearing that black leather jacket. It just didn't do it for me. <laughs> but then, a few years later, we met again at Haverhill Academy, where you were teaching and I came in at half year to teach, and I think this was part of God's plan. When I saw you then, you had on that red shirt and those black pants and your hair was coming down over your eyes and I think that's when I fell in love with you at second sight. <laughs> yeah, I think a second. <laughs> it, 50 years ago, we stood here before God, each other, and our family and friends, and exchanged our marriage vows. I remember my legs were shaking so badly. I, I think it was nerves, but also I think it was just excitement for what our future was going to bring for the two of us. And now I stand here today, 50 years later, and I know what 50 years of that future's been. And you know what? It was, a, it was a wonderful adventure, our marriage. We have been so blessed in our marriage. We've been blessed with two amazing daughters, Kendra and Shana, and their husbands, John and Matt, who we both love and, and respect and four awesome grandchildren, Kyle, Paige, Harper, and Savannah. And importantly, we have had God in our marriage. He's been there every step of the way with us. He's, he's guided us, and he's protected us, and he's brought us to, to where we are today. Now, Lloyd, we're on a new journey, and we know it's not going to be an easy one. But with our faith in God and the love and support of our family and friends, you know what? We're going to be okay. <laughs> I chose you 50 years ago, and I choose you again today. I love you, Lloyd Steves. Thank you for being my husband. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> I invite us to stand one more time as we sing the third verse of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
from their first wedding together. And oh. Oh. oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Chrissy made me cry. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, they make us cry sometimes. Oh. That's good. Let's see it. All right, so Bob, I invite you to go first. If you might repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. And with a thankful heart. And with a thankful heart. I once again declare. I once again declare. That I, Bob. That I, Bob. Take you, Elaine. To take you, Elaine. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better and for worse. For better and for worse. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. And now, Elaine, if you might repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. And with a thankful heart. And with a thankful heart. I once again declare. I once again declare. That I, Elaine. That I, Elaine. Take you, Bob. Take you, Bob. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. And now as a community, I invite us to uh, share the blessing for this couple. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all grace, bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit, Elaine and Bob, who have reaffirmed their marriage covenant. Enable them to grow in love and peace with you and with each other all their days, that they may reach out in concern and service to the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to share with one another and the church. Oh, wow. Uh, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> you go. You go. You go. You go. <laughs> okay, Bob. Mm -hmm. This is such a special day. It's been a joy to have spent the last 37 years with you. I have loved you every one of those days. I will continue to love and respect you for the rest of our days together. Because we both turn to God each and every day, I know that our love will continue to thrive and our needs will be met. There have been times when you took care of me and times when I've taken care of you. As we have helped each other, God is always taking care of us. Our time together is always so special. Thank you for loving me and for being there for me to love. Thank you. <clears throat> Elaine. You've been my best friend, my mentor, a confidant and soulmate for 37 years, and it sure doesn't seem like that long. <laughs> but most of all, you're the love of my life. You make me happier than I could ever imagine. And more loved than I ever thought possible. Today, in the presence of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I reaffirm my place as your husband. May our days be long, and may they be seasoned with faith, love, and understanding, and respect forever and ever. Today is the beginning of the rest of our lives. I choose to spend today and all my tomorrows with you. So now I pray for all the years to come, especially when youth has run to do, to have nothing short of my love for you.
invite you to stand as we sing our closing verse of Love the Blind, All Loves Excelling. Thank you. During this uh, time, we are putting the offering plates in the back as you enter or as you leave. I invite you to uh, add your contributions, your commitments to the Lord as you use those as you would feel fit. And I invite us to respond with thankful hearts for all that God has given to us. Well, let us pray. Oh God, we are thankful for the many ways you continue to bless our lives. Not only with the physical things that we need, money and food and water and shelter, but also the intangibles of love and trust and relationship. And Lord, as we bring these gifts before you as a sign of all that we have and all that we are, Lord, that you would add your blessing to these gifts, that indeed for all of us, that each of our gifts and all that we are would be a part of being faithful to your kingdom that you would call us to be a part of in this in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing the glory, uh, doxology together. this is a little out of out of character but those who know me know I like to run my mouth <laughs> I want to congratulate the three couples and all other couples that are here that say their vows to each other quietly may you continue to live in happiness and peace and with God's blessing, a good many more years. Those who are able, please join me standing for our prayer of confession. A prayer of confession is a way for us to acknowledge and repent of our sins. Through prayers of confession, we come clean to God about our mistakes and our needs for God's grace. Thus, we prepare our hearts to be cleansed by Christ's sacrifice and transformed by the Holy Spirit. God, God, God of mercy, we come in our unity, unity but we, we confess the many ways that we are divided. May our common identity as your children and our common witness to Christ Find us together in your name. Give us Bless true hearts of compassion, compassion that we might humbly serve you and one another in love. In love that, that we might be a witness to your love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The words for communion response should be on the front. If you'd like to follow along in your uh, hymnal, it should be on page 15. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread... And he gave thanks to God. Breaking it, he offered it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As the meal continued on at the end of the evening, the Lord held up the cup. He gave thanks to God and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I invite us to pray. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we gather here and on these gifts of bread and of juice. Make them to be the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. In this church and the United Methodist Church, you do not need to be a member of this church in order to receive of the elements which God has provided freely for all who would receive them, simply that you would have in your heart the desire to receive of the gifts of God. As you come forward this morning, I will break off a piece of the bread and hand it to you, and then you have an opportunity to then take of the cup which uh, Gail will be holding. And as you come forward and take of those elements, I invite you then to return to your seat. Come. The table is prepared.
Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery that you have given to us, that through your love that you have called us to be your bride, to be your people, that through your offering of your sacrifice through Jesus Christ, we are united with you here in this communion. And so Lord, as we come and recognize the greatness of your gift that you have given to us, we ask that you would continue to mold us and shape us, that we might change as your people to be who you call us to be, who you know us to truly be. And this is in Jesus Christ who teaches us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our closing song together. It's going to be in the little black book or in your bulletin. Uh, Bind us together, faith number 2226. As we close in our worship service together, I want to remind you that downstairs uh, there is some special refreshments in honor of this uh, marriage renewal today. And uh, I want to just take a moment to celebrate. Can we just celebrate the couple? Give them applause for for, uh, their commitments to one another. 
And as we close the service together, I invite you to turn your hearts and your hands to God in whatever way might be comfortable for you as we ask for God's blessing. And Lord, we ask that you would pour out your blessing on each who would hear your words. Lord, that we would know of your love that grows in us, that we would be the witness of that love to all. And this we would pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.